The predicted rapture date came and went last week, and it's already falling out of the public eye. Non-believers had a wonderful time poking fun at it. Some Christians were offended. So I had to pause and think about this. Was it rude for us to make fun of their most cherished beliefs? Was it bad form? Should non-believers just not go there? For most Americans, the answer is no. Most Americans were indoctrinated into Christianity at an early age, and thus have earned the right to make fun of it. They are probably not outsiders poking fun in bad form. I personally was indoctrinated at an early age. As a result, I spent the majority of my childhood terrified by the rapture. There was a period of time when I would panic every time one of my siblings was not where I expected them to be because I thought they had been raptured without me, leaving me to be an orphan throughout the tribulation period. I was especially terrified one night when I was home alone during a lunar eclipse, and I was quite certain that one-third of the moon had just turned to blood and we were experiencing the tribulation. I remember feeling overwhelming feelings of guilt, not because of anything that I had done, but because of imaginary things, like the fact that I could never hear God speaking to me like my friends said that they could hear. So for me, making fun of the rapture was like going back and poking at a bully who used to kick my ass every day in school. And I'm not going to lie, it was a great laugh at the expense of others. The biggest reaction I saw from Christians was that they were annoyed by Harold Camping's stunt. He misrepresented the faith. I think it was great to have the rapture front and center in the public eye. It was a great time for non-believers because the biblical end times predictions are almost as embarrassing a belief as the biblical creation stories. Pausing for effect. Mainstream Christian billboards like this one are interesting because they highlight the real issue. The real issue is the fact that it's much easier to believe in end times prophecies if the date is a moving goalpost. So let's try a thought experiment to test your faith. Think about how difficult it is to start working out and eating right. How much easier is it to say, I will probably start in a few weeks, than it is to say, I will start tomorrow morning. But after a couple weeks go by, the typical action is to push it out a couple more weeks, and a couple more, and a couple more, and it really never happens, at least not in that cycle, right? Now what about the end times? Here is a list of events that the book of Revelations, last book in the Bible, says will happen. A great earthquake will cause the dead to physically rise from their graves to be judged before God. An army of 200 million will kill one-third of humanity. The ground will open up and release locusts to harm us. One-third of the sun, the moon, and the stars will be smitten. The seas will become blood. And most importantly, Jesus will descend through the clouds to save the day and the faithful will magically be whisked away to heaven. So, how sure are you that these things will happen, let's say, within the next six months? How about the next two years? The next five years? Okay, how much easier is it to believe if you think it's going to happen within the next 50 years? Do you find that it is exponentially easier to believe as we push the date out beyond your current planning cycles? Future and fantasy go nicely together, but bringing a fantasy too close to the present date becomes incredibly awkward. The purpose of this channel is to get you to ask yourself these two questions. Number one, how strong is your faith? Number two, why?